Welcome to uh, Seedles 2022. Um, it is 10 a.m. and people are rolling in. So some people managed to find the links to join. Um, if you know friends that should be here and have, do not seem to be able to find the links, they should look in their junk mail because that seems to be where things want to go. Um, I am Mandy. I am the... Uh, uh, one of the people on the planning committee for the Southeast Data Library and Symposium, or CEDLs as we call it. So I'm here to just roll this thing out. Um, so first, um, before I um, go on, I just want to uh, acknowledge all my other uh, planning committee members that helped put this together. This is our Third, I think, yes, virtual conference, and there's a lot that goes on to make this happen. So I want to give everybody a virtual applause for all their help on this. Um, and then what's next? Um, and then we also want to thank our uh, our sponsors, uh, people that have helped us to get this going off the ground. Um, RDAP, Research Data, Data and Access Preservation <laughs> Association um, is they host our registration system uh, um, and help us handle the money and all that stuff. So we want to thank them for sure. And we'll have um, a member of RDAP in a moment, Lindsay Jippen, um, do a little talk, a brief talk about what RDAP is. Um, but then we also want to thank uh, Emory Libraries, particularly Jen Doty, one of our planning committee members, because Emory Libraries and Jen are the ones that got the Zoom platform, all these meetings, webinars, et cetera, breakout rooms, polls for your workshops, all those things we can thank Jen <laughs> Doty for and um, our uh, Emory Libraries. And then um, well, now I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay uh, Jippen and let Lindsay talk just a little bit about RDAP. Thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, thanks so much, Mandy. Um, so like Mandy said, we are the Research Data Access and Preservation Association. Um, it's a really great organization to get involved with. Um, can we go to the next slide? Thank you. So our mission is to um, support the community of information professionals in um, best practices for research data access and preservation. Uh, there's a link there to our values. Um, we do have a lot of um, data professionals in the organization, but it is mostly data librarians. So it's a really good community to get involved in. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is our current executive board. Next slide. Yeah, so here's a, a list of our committees and pretty much all of those committees are looking for volunteers. Um, if you're looking to get involved in any kind of service work, um, there's an email on there that you can shoot an email to. You're also welcome to email me directly if you would like to. Um, and then the other thing that I wanna highlight, we'll go to the next slide, is that we also have a conference coming up in March. Um, it's the RDAP Summit. Um, like CEDLs, it's a pretty affordable um, conference. It's also geared towards data librarians. So I would highly recommend it, not just as someone on the RDAP board, but as someone who is a, a newer data librarian, a new data professional. I attended both CEDLs and RDAP last year, and I found them to be um, the best conferences. CEDLs was the best, in my personal opinion, but RDAP also great. Um, it's just a lot bigger, so it's easier to miss things, I think. But anyway, uh, great conference to attend. Um, we do have, um, we do also have scholarships um, and our call for proposals is open right now. I think it's due on like November 4th. So I would encourage everyone to take a look at that. And if you're interested, um, submit a proposal. And I think that's all from RDAP. So thanks for having me. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And now I'm going to turn it to, over to Joe to talk a little bit about format and logistics of the day and the days to follow. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. 
Um, alrighty, hello everybody. Uh, so, some format and logistics information. Um, today's short talks and tomorrow's and the next days are gonna take place in a Zoom session, a Zoom webinar session like the one we are in now. Um, so today's short talks will all take place in this Zoom session, which you can leave and come back to at any time. Um, please note Thursday and Friday have their own Zoom sessions. So it's not gonna be the same link as today, um, but you should have those links um, in your inbox. Um, or if you are in the Discord, which I'll talk to you and uh, talk about in a little bit, um, we can send the links to you directly. Uh, so attendees during the short talks, you will come in and you'll be muted by default like you are today. Um, you can use the chat for general discussion and comments, both with hosts and panelists and with anybody else, um, with other attendees as well. Um, you can ask questions for the hosts, co-hosts, or panelists' eyes only in the Zoom question Q&A box. Um, so I think that should be at the bottom of the kind of lower menu um, in Zoom. There should be a QA and a in addition to the chat. Um, during a talks Q&A, so each short talk um, at the end, we're going to have a brief period for questions and answers for a Q&A session. Um, so you can raise your hand if you would like to be unmuted to speak, um, and you can raise your hand using the reactions menu in that lower bar, or I think you can also get to the reactions from the participants list. Zoom has added like 12 features since I used it last. Um, and then if you uh, would like captions to be enabled, um, that is also gonna be on that lower bar. There should be a little CC closed caption button to enable the live transcript. We do have that going. Um, and then the recording is gonna have transcript or the captions as well, um, if you would like those. So our short talk presenters, um, we've already kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, please be sure to be in the Zoom room 10 to 15 minutes prior to the beginning of the session block that you're presenting. So not just your presentation, but the entire block. When you join, raise your hand using the reactions menu um, and we'll find you and promote you uh, to a panelist um, or a presenter so that you can share your screen and, and unmute and use your video and audio. Um, hosts are going to give the presenters five minute, three minute and one minute left verbal prompts or warnings um, so that we can kind of keep uh, presentations within our time limit. Um, those might get cut off, so we might also put it in the chat or keep trying to do the minute warnings. Um, and during the end of your short talk slot, again, um, during the question, uh, the Q&A uh, part, uh, co-hosts are going to be assigning the next presenters as panelists. Um, so don't be alarmed if other folks suddenly appear as panelists while the presenter is finishing up their time slot. Um, for newly assigned panelists, please don't unmute yourself or start screen sharing um, or start your video until you are given the go ahead by the session host. So we're going to be recording each short talk separately. Um, please be aware the host will make announcements. Um, you'll hear the recording has begun or the recording has ended um, a couple of times today. So moving on to workshops. So at 1 p.m., um, I believe all three days, not just Wednesday and Friday this year, um, these workshops are going to be in their own Zoom meeting session. So it's not like Zoom webinars where you can't turn on your video and audio and chat. Um, you should be able to do that in these workshops. So it's a little bit more interactive. Um, and if you registered for a workshop, you should have received the link to join that. Check your inbox, check your spam folder, um, and let us know if you do not have that. If you registered and saw that it says waitlist, um, that means the seats are full. If somebody cancels the registration for that workshop, we will send you the information to join. Um, but otherwise, uh, you are just on the wait list, unfortunately. So we have, I think, a cap of 40 for our workshops this year. For the poster session, so I believe that's tomorrow um, at 1, not at 1 p.m., that is earlier, um, you will join the main Zoom room, um, and then you'll be able to hop between uh, poster breakout rooms from that main Zoom room link. Um, and Mandy put in the chat, the poster session is at 11.15. Thank you. Uh, so again, we're going to do the posters in breakout rooms, and you'll be able to kind of pick which Zoom room or which breakout room you'd like to join, and you'll be able to go between them without us having to assign them to you. Um, so you can join and leave the posters or the poster session at any point throughout that session. You can ask questions, you can chat, um, and then posters are also hosted on the OSF uh, instance for CEDL, so we'll have that link um, for you during the poster session so you can download the posters and see them, and then the presenters will also be sharing their posters um, in whatever format they would like. Uh, we also have the poster shared via Discord, um, which I'll get to in a second. But for both workshops and poster sessions and for short talks, although short talks, it's not as relevant, um, please remember to mute your microphone when you are not speaking in those workshop and poster sessions, um, as well as your uh, video if the connection gets kind of spotty. Um, and then uh, Melissa put the program link in there too, so you can see what time things are at um, and what our sessions and short talks will be. 
And next slide, please. So now I'm going to go into the Discord a little bit. So I talked about it. Um, one of the kind of known limitations of virtual events that we have is that, you know, attendees will miss out on kind of spontaneous interactions, on discussions, things that happen in between sessions during that face-to-face -face event that you usually get. Um, so to help facilitate that networking and discussion, um, which for a lot of us are key parts of events like CEDL specifically, um, we have the Discord server. Um, so symposium sessions are all being held in Zoom. Communications are still occurring via email and Zoom, but Discord adds kind of a networking and discussion uh, feature functionality. Um, so it's not required for you to participate in CEDLs and symposium proceedings, but it, it does add that extra uh, uh, communication uh, aspect. Um, so if you'd like to ask questions and participate in discussions about those posters, but you can't make it to the poster session, for example, or if you run out of time for your question, um, the Discord is a great place for that. And there's also a couple of other cool things in there. Um, so you can use it on the three things pictured, um, and then you can log in at discord.com slash download or download it. And then to join the Discord, I'm going to put the link into the chat. It is xw3f. C, um, that URL, which didn't turn into, into a URL because I skipped the HTTPS, um, that will let you join the CEDLs Discord. And you do have to have a Discord account for at least five minutes before you can join, just so we can avoid um, spam bots and the like joining. Um, and I believe that's my spiel for logistics and information. All right. Thank you, Joe. What's next to know? Things to know. <laughs> so, so um, there's there's a lot of links on here that I think you you've all you've received them in some form or other, either in that Zoom's links uh, doc that we've sent you before, or or other things. But just a reminder. There's the uh, first link online program to be able to see abstracts, all, all the info, times, et cetera. The Zoom links doc that you've received, and I just pasted in the chat as well, um, will give you the links to be able to get to that. Um, those sessions each day. Um, Discord link, code of conduct. Um, we have a code of conduct and on that page, and also there's a link here, if you need to report a violation of a code and contact, you have that, that opportunity to do so. Um, we have a Twitter uh, handle. Uh, so if you're, if you are Twitter tweeter type person, <laughs> you can feel free to Twitter tweet um, and use hashtags that either Seedles 2022 or to save space Seedles uh, 22 works as well. Uh, there's the Seedles email there that I will be monitoring throughout the day that I will try to answer questions if you have the questions through there. Um, and then there's also a link at the bottom and you've been sent this in emails as well um, for an attendee certificate. I know that we know that sometimes people are asked to somehow prove that they were attending a, a conference. And so this is our way of, of uh, giving you something. But if you need anything more, please do email the CEDLs um, email and we will do our uh, do what we need to do to make sure you uh, your employers believe you <laughs> that you're attending something. 